Hi, this is Frank here with Die Hard RC Addicts, and today's video is sponsored by Hobby King. Today we're going to be doing part three of the SK450 quadcopter. Um, in part one we did the build, part two we did the setup of the electronics and the KK2 board. Today we're going to be doing some testing and tuning and some test flights, so let's go ahead and get it plugged in and get it in the air. Alright guys, we're plugged in and it's on. To arm it, we want to move the throttle stick to the bottom right. The little red light comes on and we're ready to go. Um, for this first flight, I have the auto stabilization off and it's set per part two video. So let's see how it goes. Feels pretty stable already. What we're looking for here is uh, oscillation caused from the, the gains being too high. It looks pretty stable actually. Do a little bit of slow speed flying around, see how it is. There is a little bit of a light breeze today, so I can definitely feel it. But other than that, it does feel pretty stable and fairly easy to fly. Looks like I'm getting a little bit of oscillation. But all in all, it still feels pretty stable. All right, let me bring it down in and uh, land it, and I'll go over a little bit of the tuning part. Okay, guys, to disarm it, click the stick on the throttle all the way to the bottom left, and it brings it back to safe mode, and we can get back in the menu. And what we're going to do is look at the PI editor. Um, these are the settings I have it set at right now. The P gain is 45, the P limit is 100. The I gain is 25 and the I limit is 20. Um, it's got some slow speed oscillation to it right now. Usually if you have a slow speed oscillation it means your I gain is probably a little bit on the high side. I mean if it's oscillating all the time it's a problem and you would definitely want to lower it. It's not oscillating all the time right now but I'm still going to bring it down a little bit. So let me get down to uh, the eye gain, I'm going to change it from 25 and I'm going to bring it down to 20 and see how it affects it. Alright, let's go ahead and get it back in the air and see how it flies. Alright, here goes. The other thing you want to do also is to check the eye gain is do some quick short rocking movements and see if it rocks back and forth when you let go of the stick. If it rocks back and forth a lot, you probably need to adjust it a little bit. It's not too bad right now, so let's do a little more flying around see how it is. Okay guys, there is an alternative way to set up the gains on this. Um, on RC Group's forum it says that you can set the I and the P gains, um, set the P gain to uh, 30 and the I gain to 0, but leave the limits as what we had set earlier. And then you bring the P gain up slowly by 5 or 10 points until you start getting a high speed oscillation and then back down 5 or 10 points from there and it should be good. After you got the P gain set, then you can adjust the I gain up the same way until you get a low speed oscillation and then back it down another 5 or 10 points until it gets stable. So I'm not going to mess around with that because it's flying pretty good right now. So I'm thinking it's set up the way I like it and I'm just going to fly it around a little bit now.
Okay, guys, I want to just remind you also, this is my first quadcopter that I've built and starting to learn how to fly it. So my flying skills aren't that great yet. Um, I do have a little bit of helicopter experience, but mostly with uh, dual rotor helicopters. So it helped a little bit. Um, it definitely is a nice flying quad with this setup. It seems like it should be easy enough even for beginners. I mean, it's pretty stable, as long as you don't get it going too fast. Um, one thing it doesn't have is definitely it doesn't have altitude hold, which would probably be a nice thing. I'm finding myself having to mess around with the throttle a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, I might bring it in and uh, adjust the stick scaling on the throttle a little bit because it seems to kind of touchy on the throttle. All right, so we're going to go back into the menu and get into stick scaling. And I'm going to bring the throttle down a little bit. I had it set at 90. Let's go ahead and bring it down to 80. Hit done and get back out. All right, let's see how it works. All right, here goes. All right, it does make it less sensitive by lowering that number, so that should help out if you're having problems with the quadcopter wanting to go up and down a lot. Again, this is all just going to be learning, I think, because I'm not used to flying a quad yet. All right, let's bring it in and uh, set it up for the auto level and see how that works. All right, guys, I got the gain set at 60 and 60 for the P&I for the auto level, and it's on, so let's see how it works. Um, I leveled it out on a table. I'm probably going to have to fine-tune this because I'm sure it's going to drift a little bit one way or the other. So here goes. Wow, it's drifting quite a bit, actually. So this is why I said in the part two video, you definitely want to have your gains up higher so you can at least have uh, fairly good control of it. All right, that's off the stick there in auto level, and it looks like it's moving forward. Um, there is a little bit of a breeze today. Oh, it definitely doesn't feel as stable as it did even with, the, with this off. I think it flew better with the off auto level off. Seems like it's wanting to wander a lot with the auto leveling on. And it's climbing a little on its own. All right, I'm going to turn that off. All right, I click the switch. And auto leveling is off. And that's off the stick with the auto leveling off. Oh, it almost seems like it works better without using it. I definitely like the way it feels when you're flying it better with it off. Seems like you have more control over the quad. And it definitely doesn't want to wander like it did with it on. The yellow ball definitely seems to be helping also uh, with the orientation, which is a good thing. Because <laughs> like I said, uh, these quadcopters are pretty symmetrical, and it seems like it helps a lot. All right, guys, I think I'm pretty out, much out of juice with that battery, so we're going to go ahead and stop flying it. And I'll go ahead and go over some final review thoughts with you now on what I think about this SK450 quadcopter. First off, I have to say that I'm very pleased with the quality of the SK450 quadcopter and how easy it was to put it together. All the components chosen to finish putting this quadcopter together seem to work pretty well. The motors selected seem like they're providing plenty of power, which is a good thing because in the future I do plan on using this either for a camera platform or maybe even FPV. And I think the new KK2 board is a pretty good match for this one.
I really like how user-friendly it is and how the LCD screen makes it very simple to make changes when you're out at the field. The only complaints I have about the KK2 board is that it doesn't have a barometer for altitude hold and it seems like the auto leveling doesn't work as well as I would have liked to see it work. Even with these minor issues, I still think this would be a great setup for somebody that's first getting into quadcopters like myself. It seemed to be very easy to fly and was nice and stable. If you're thinking about getting into quadcopters, I would definitely recommend this SK450 as it's definitely got me excited about flying quadcopters. Okay guys, this concludes part 3 of the SK450 quadcopter and I'd like to say thanks for tuning in and I'd like to give a special thanks to Hobby King for sponsoring this video and I'll see you all again soon here on Die Hard RC Addicts.